Hi, uh, I'm Richard Mansfield. I'm a British and international mountain guide. I've skied for over 35 seasons. Um, I run a company called Mountain Guides Limited. This is a, this is a snow profile, so the pistas are digging these um, regularly throughout the season, and from that they can build up a picture from each of the, of the different layers that they can find within the snowpack. E each of these different uh, sections shows how hard that particular layer is. So you can see how the different layers in the snowpack uh, are resting on top of each other. Um, and if you have a very big difference in hardness, so here you've got a very hard layer and here you've got a very soft layer, then less likely to bond together. On this side of the graph, it's a little bit more technical, each of these tells you the type of snow crystal they've found in the, in the layer, uh, the size of the snow crystal, and so on and so forth. And faceted layers are signified by the square. There's a lot of faceting going on, a lot of unstable snow in the snowpack, buried by subsequent layers. The thing to do is to go and have a look and actually see what we can find ourselves in the snowpack. We're right down low, we're getting much more sugary snow much harder, harder to dig it out, just falls off the shovel. So it's less well consolidated. What we're really doing is just looking at this surface here. Um, and I've cleaned that up a little bit with the shovel. And just with the naked eye, you can already make out some layers there, surely. Look, there's something there, yeah? There's something there. There's something in there. There's something down there. There's something down here. Um, and, and you can even see it different textures you know can you not see different colors yeah. in there I can feel different layers look that's quite soft it's getting firmer there quite a lot firmer push through and it's going softer again and it's quite a lot firmer there and it's soft again pretty much the same all the way down here it's getting a bit firmer at the bottom and then suddenly it's very soft again okay and grab a handful of snow on the top crush it together not a very good snowball, but he's making a bit of a snowball. They come down here and get this stuff. It doesn't want to make a snowball at all. It's a very weak, soft, sugary layer with a lot of stuff on top of it. So if you liken it to a sandwich, you know, let's say you get a get the ground. And that's your sandwich board, right? Your cutting board. Put on top of that a load of granulated sugar. Then put a piece of bread on top of that. Then put some mayonnaise, then put some more granulated sugar, then another slice of bread, then a bit of lettuce. And they're all like different layers, if you like. If you tilt that up, right, it might bond together. But if you add more, at some point, that sugary layer at the bottom is going to slide. And that's pretty much what's happening in the snowpack. It, it can improve, but it takes a considerable amount of time for it to change. Weeks. So it's not something that's going to happen overnight just because we've had a bit of warm weather. Um, so no, it's not going to change. That can stay there right through to the spring. Most of the terrain people ski on is, is over 30 degrees. However, as a guide, one of the first things I do when I'm concerned about the avalanche risk is I'll start off skiing on slopes less than 30 degrees. Before you go out, you should be checking the weather forecast and the avalanche forecast the night before. And you have to remember that that is a forecast. It's a prediction it doesn't necessarily mean it's true. So you have to be responsible for making observations when you get out in the morning, rather than just relying on what was a forecast the night before. If you read what the avalanche category three says, it says it is a considerable risk of avalanche. So <laughs> what that means to me is that it's very easy to get avalanche in a category three forecast. So it's all about dealing with the risk. Look at the terrain, you know, if, if you're concerned about a slope, don't ski it. If you do have to ski a slope that you think is, you're uncomfortable about, don't all ski it at once, ski it one at a time. Don't ski right down the middle of the slope. Ski to one side of the slope and have a strategy. If the avalanche go, it goes off, can you ski out of it to the side? The rest of the group should be watching, looking after you as best they can. Snow is very unpredictable and that you can ski a slope one day that's perfectly all right, a couple of hours later it's not. You can ski a slope and then ski a slope exactly the same aspect next door to it and you get avalanched. And I think one final thing in, in support of the Pisteurs, 
Um, we get very frustrated when we come out here and the lifts aren't open at 8.30 or 9 o'clock on the dot. They have a difficult job to do. Uh, it's not the fact that they haven't bothered to get up in the morning. They've probably been there since 5 in the morning. Uh, they are making the ski terrain, the pistes, as safe as they can. And one of the things about Chamonix is that they know any single lift they open that can be any slope from that lift that can be accessed either by skiing, by walking, by skinning, will probably get skied that day uh, because that's the nature of the, of the skier we have in the valley here. So they're quite often reticent to open a slope or open a lift because they know that anything can, that you can get to from that lift will get skied. And if they have concerns about those slopes, they might be slow in opening the lifts. So it's, it's partly our fault actually for being adventurous skiers and the level of skiing is at a very high level so people get off and into steep stuff very quickly.